Hi everyone, Gregory here, not only code. Today I am going to talk about code. Specifically, I'm going to talk about good code. What is good code? How to distinguish it from bad code? And whether, and if yes, when, you should care about writing good code. All right, let's go. As you can imagine, there is no single definition of what is good code. Different companies, different institutions have different standards and different ways to measure the quality of code. What's important to understand is that the code quality is not binary. You can't just say that some piece of code is good and some piece of code is bad. It's more like a spectrum or a series of spectrums. You can say that in some specific metric, this code performs extremely well or extremely badly, but most of the time the code will be just around average. The first characteristic of good code is correctness. Good code must be correct, because if the code doesn't do what it's supposed to do, it doesn't have any value. It might implement some clever solution, the implementation might be wonderful, the code might look beautiful, but what is its value if it doesn't work correctly? Now, you might think that correctness is binary, you can say that the code either works correctly or not. But what if it handles correctly 95% of use cases? Is it correct or is it not? And what if it fails just once in every million cases? Would you say that it's correct or not? As software developers, we rarely have the privilege of knowing exactly how our code will be used, how will it be executed, and what are all the use cases all the values that can be put into our code by users. Therefore, we can't guarantee that it will behave correctly 100% of the time. So what do I understand as correct code then? Well, I believe that code is correct when first, it behaves correctly in all the scenarios that we can think of. And second, it will not crash in scenarios that we can't think of. In other words, it should either work correctly or it should catch an error and present it to the user. In some cases, you might need to make a trade-off. You might sacrifice the correctness of the code for the sake of some other characteristic. You might say that this code will fail in some extremely rare case, but thanks to that, it will be much simpler. So you can either make the code more correct or you can make it simpler. This is a trade-off that you will be forced to make from time to time and there's no correct answer here. It is up to you and up to your team, to your manager, to decide what is more important in your particular case. The second characteristic of good code is speed. Good code should be fast. Or maybe in other words, good code should be efficient. What I mean by fast is not that your code should be executed within a certain amount of time. And I definitely don't mean that code written in slower languages is worse than code written in faster languages. What I mean by fast or efficient code is that it doesn't do unnecessary operations. Let me give you an example. You have a function that performs certain expensive operation, expensive in terms of time, and the result of this operation will be used a couple of times. Now, you can execute the function that will perform this computation multiple times, or you can perform it once, save the results in some variable or some cache, and reuse it in the future cases. Of course, good code will implement the second solution. It will not execute unnecessary operation. A second example is database. There is a famous n plus one query problem in relational databases, where data that can be fetched in one or two queries is fetched in n plus one queries instead, where n stands for number of records in certain table. If your code suffers from the n plus one query problem and you have 100,000 users in the database and you want to fetch them, then in order to fetch the data, your code might execute 100,000 database queries instead of one or two queries. And the last example is related to data structures. Let's say you store certain amount of information in an array. And now you need to check whether certain elements, certain values are included in this array or not. If your array is big enough and if you need to do it multiple times, then this operation will be slow because in order to check whether the information is included in array or not, you might need to check all the elements. The alternative might be to use something like a dictionary instead of array, 
where in order to check whether an element is included in dictionary or not, you just check one element instead of all of them. So again, fast code is not only about the time that it takes to execute, it's about avoiding costly operations that can be avoided. And of course, remember that speed of code is relative. Five seconds will be very, very long if you want to render a single static web page, and it will be very short if you want to render 4K video or some 3D image. Good code is also secure, but security is a huge topic. There's a whole industry about computer security. Therefore, how can we ensure that our code is secure? Well, we can't ensure it in 100%, especially that probably our code relies on some other software. It might use some external libraries. It may use some external libraries. It will be running in some operating system that might have security issues. So what do I mean by secure code? Two things. First, secure code shouldn't add vulnerabilities on top of the ones that are already somewhere there in the software. So it is about the security of the particular piece of code that you're writing. This code shouldn't add any security issue. And second, secure code should not depend on insecure code. For example, if your application uses some outdated libraries that are known to have vulnerabilities, this is not secure code. You know that it has issues and you still rely on libraries that are not secure. So in order to write secure code, you should focus on the dependencies that your code has and the vulnerabilities of your own code. And lastly, good code needs to be well designed. It needs to be designed with change in mind. Unless you work on personal project, you're not really sure who will modify your code in the future. It might be your current team members, it might be someone that will join the project in the future. Your code might be modified well after you stop working on it. Well designed code makes collaboration easier. But what does it really mean that code is well designed? Well, that's a very hard question and I don't think that there is a single definition that describes it perfectly. So I'm going to talk about this subject a lot in this video series. And today I'm going to give you three characteristics, three hints that can help you determine whether what you see is well-designed code or not. So well-designed code should be easy to understand, easy to navigate and easy to test. First, easy to understand. We can't change what we can't understand. Therefore, your code should be as easy to understand as possible, because there might be other developers reading it in the future. It might be you reading it in one year and wondering what the hell is that. There are many ways in which you can make your code easier to understand. For example, use descriptive variable names, like never call variable data, because it doesn't say anything about what is there. Use descriptive names of classes and functions. Keep your functions and classes small and keep the list of parameters short. And add comments to explain why your code works in this particular way. Secondly, well-designed code is easy to navigate because we can't change what we can't find. In order to make code easier to navigate, you should remove redundancy. Make sure to extract common parts of code. Make sure to split your code into well-defined classes, modules, files. Keep related functions together and ensure that different layers of your code do not mix with each other. For example, the parts that deal with UI shouldn't be dealing with business logic and the business logic parts shouldn't deal with data storage. If you ensure that your code is easy to navigate, it will make it much easier for other developers to find the pieces that they want and need to change. And lastly, well-designed code is easy to test because we can't change what we can't validate. Whenever it is possible, you should be writing automated tests for your code. And when you can't, make sure to write an instruction about how to test your code. When I want to change part of the code that I work on, I strongly rely on automated tests. A good suite of tests gives me confidence that if I make a mistake, if I break some functionality, there will be a red light telling me it's broken. It will also give me assurance that if everything is okay, there will be a green light saying, yes, this code is correct. Okay, so now that we know what is good code, the question is, 
Should we care as software developers to write good code? I believe that it depends on your situation. What is the core of the code that you are writing right now? If you write code that will be used by other people, if you write code that will be developed or is developed by a team of people, if it's something that performs critical functions, then I believe that you should absolutely care about the code quality. But there are many cases where you don't really need to care about the quality of the code. For example, if you're writing a prototype that you know that you will throw out and you will not use it in production, then why bother? You just want to check whether your approach is fine and that's it. It's perfectly fine if you don't care about the quality and design of your code. Writing good code has many advantages. It will be easier to change. You know that it works correctly. You know that it is safe. But good code comes with certain cost, which is time and effort needed to develop it. If you want to write good code, of course, you will need more time and effort to write it than if you don't care about the code quality. I personally care about the code quality very much. I always try to teach my developers some new techniques, some new ways to write better code. I always encourage them to write automated tests whenever it's possible. I rely on tools that report errors and vulnerabilities, but there are cases where I just don't care. Sometimes I just need to write a few lines of code that I will execute a couple of times and I don't need to care about the design or the speed execution of this code. Once again, remember that all these characteristics that I talked about today are spectrums. So your code might be almost 100% correct. Your code might be average in terms of the design. It might be below average in terms of security. These are all spectrums, they are not binary values. All right, that's it. That's the end of my second video. I really hope that you find it interesting. I hope that you found it useful. As I mentioned at the beginning, the topic of code quality is extremely broad. I will be coming back to it over and over in the future. And in the next episode, I will be talking about something completely different. I will be talking about designing your future skill set, how to think about what you want to learn and how to determine how much time you want to spend on learning different skills. I hope to see you then.